We are now in the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, and the clock marks just midnight on a December day in 2016 when Oleksiy Yasinski was watching a movie about Edward Snowden with his family when the lights went out suddenly. By this exciting way begins the book Sand War, a new era of cyber war which we will talk about today. Yasinski's wife joked saying that the hackers don't want them to finish the movie, but Yasinski didn't love. Yasinski is a chief forensic analyst at an information security company in Ukraine, and this sudden power outage just in the middle of the night reminded him of a similar event exactly a year ago, that is in 2015, when a quarter of a million Ukrainian citizens were cut off electricity just two days before Christmas. Kazinski thought about the timing of the event and the freezing cold outside, which would creep into people's homes and cause the water to freeze in the pipes. Yazinski related these two events to what he had lived through over the past 14 months in his work from the complaints of many Ukrainian companies and government agencies about cyber attacks and concluded the following fact. This is definitely a cyber attack and this time it had arrived at my home. The book talks about these attacks and other attacks in the scope of cyber war. This book was considered by the SANS Institute as the best cyber security book of 2019 and received excellent reviews from many newspapers such as the Los Angeles Times, the Washington Post, the Financial Times, Business Insider, Forbes, USA Today, among others. Through this book, you will learn about many of the concepts of cyber security, the tools used in the attacks, and other topics explained in a simple and interesting way that makes this book suitable for cybersecurity professionals at all levels and even for the average reader. It is a cybersecurity book and a novel that can be made a movie at the same time. Several cybersecurity experts tracked these attacks only to eventually find that the attacks are interconnected and point to one source, a group of hackers initially called Sandworm. The author of the book, Andy Greenberg, recited the story of these attacks, trying to find out why they are not confronted or, or even if the perpetrators were discovered from the beginning in the first place. Actually, you should read this book. No, you must read this book. The book is divided into six parts. Emergence, which is about the beginning of the discovery of clues that refer to the Sandworm Hackers Group a year before the first attack on electricity in Ukraine. And then it explains the beginning of the process of tracking these clues after the attack and understanding how it was executed. Finally, there is a presentation of the backgrounds of the historical conflict between Russia and Ukraine and an explanation of what happened in the Chernobyl nuclear reactor. Origins, which contains flashbacks or chronicle of the evolution of cyber attacks on civilian infrastructure and industrial facilities in general in the period leading up to the attack in Ukraine. This includes an American experiment in 2007 to destroy a huge electric generator as well as the famous Stuxnet virus that attacked Iran's nuclear reactors. In this section, we also find stories of other attacks directed not at the physical infrastructure but on the internet infrastructure in countries such as America, Estonia and Georgia. This section then is a historical account of the evolution of cyber warfare in each of its two sections, civilian infrastructure and cyber infrastructure or the internet. Evolution which continues to explain the evolution of cyber attacks 
such as the intervention in the U.S. elections in 2016 as well as the second attack on Ukraine's electricity in that same year. Apotheosis It is about the attacks that followed the second attack on Ukraine's electricity and how they were prepared. Here we find how some powerful hacking tools were stolen from the NSA or the National Security Agency and used in attacks that had catastrophic results worldwide. Believe it or not, the NSA has been hacked. Malwares like WannaCry or PTA will be explained here. In this part, we also find an estimate of the material losses resulting from these attacks. Identity Here the true identity of the Sandworm group is revealed as the Russian main intelligence directorate known for short as GU and formerly as the GRU, which was previously responsible for non-cyber operations. This unit has carried out the most destructive and costly cyber attack in the history. In this part, we find an overview of the most important intelligence operations that the GRU has carried out in the past, especially its branch called Spitznaz, which specializes in sabotage, assassination, and terrorist acts. An example of such operations is the attempt assassination of Sergei Skribal and his daughter in London with an NRF agent. Skribal was a double agent of GRU and British intelligence as well. In addition to Scribble, in this part the author recounted the stories of many other double GRU agents who revealed to the West the level of operations planned within the terrifying unit. One of these agents told Westerners about small nuclear weapons with a force equal to about 2 kilotons of TNT, suggesting that he could plant them in the heart of Moscow around the headquarters of the Russian army, the Communist Party, the Russian intelligence or the KGB. Also, we find in this part what the Western reactions were, which actually came late according to the author's opinion. Additionally, there is an explanation of other cyber attacks related to the previous attacks, as I will mention in the next slide. Finally, we find the details of the visit of the book's author to Moscow to track the Sandworm group. Lessons, which is about lessons learned such as should a treaty like the Geneva Convention be signed for the protection of cyberspace, especially to prevent attacks on civilian infrastructure such as electricity, dams, hospitals, etc. We are on the verge of IoT or Internet of Things and attacks like these can get very dangerous and reach every home in the world. The Americans carried out experiments in 2018 to find a way to confront a cyber attack on the electricity infrastructure. And this is what you will found explained in one of the chapters of this part. The experiments resulted in the attacking team being able to disable the power grid again and again. The conclusion was as follows. Disrupting the US electricity grid will be more difficult than its Ukrainian counterpart. But once that happens, the hacker's task in keeping it down will often be easier. The lesson learned was that the best defense is to have a non-digital backup ready to turn on the power grid when there is a disruption caused by cyber attacks, an analog or manual backup.